from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Friday, April the 14th, 2017. A terror attack in Jerusalem today claimed the life of a young British woman. A Palestinian terrorist from East Jerusalem was on board the city's light rail when it came to the IDF square stop. He then pulled out a kitchen knife and stabbed a 23-year-old British student multiple times in the chest. The victim, who was studying in Israel, was rushed to the hospital but died of her injuries. The terrorist was identified as 57-year-old Jamil Tamimi, and police said he had a history of domestic violence and mental issues. And according to the Times of Israel, he was on his way home from a mental health facility at the time of the attack. A police officer who happened to be on board the tram wrestled Tamimi to the ground before he could harm anyone else. Tamimi was then arrested. Israel security agency the Shin Bet said this is another case out of many where a Palestinian who is suffering from personal, mental or moral issues chooses to carry out a terror attack in order to find a way out of their problems. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Israel's President Reuven Rivlin extended their condolences to the family of the British victim and vowed to continue to fight terror. Charges were filed in a U.S. court against two Palestinian terrorists who murdered a U.S. citizen in Israel six and a half years ago. Ayad Fatafta and Kifa Ghanimat now face federal charges for stabbing Christine Lukin to death on December the 18th of 2010 while she was hiking with a friend in the Jerusalem forest. The friend suffered severe injuries. The two terrorists are currently serving prison sentences in Israel. The American arrest warrants were issued by the U.S. Department of Justice yesterday. The Education Ministry of the Palestinian Authority said it, it was suspending ties with the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, or UNRWA, because of the agency's plans to make revisions to the Palestinian Authority curriculum. The proposed changes reportedly would be to maps currently being used in Palestinian school textbooks which refer to cities within Israel, including Jerusalem, as Palestinian. The PA called the proposed changes a betrayal of the Palestinian narrative. Israel welcomed the reported changes to the curriculum. COGAT, the Israel Defense Ministry's agency responsible for civilian affairs in the West Bank and Gaza, said the reform of the curriculum is a balanced representation of Jerusalem as having religious significance to the three major monotheistic religions, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. The Palestinian education system has long been criticized by Israel as promoting incitement against it and denying its existence. Longtime Jewish journalist Jesse Lurie has died. Lurie was the founding executive editor of Hadassah magazine back in 1947, holding the post for 33 years. He was also among the founding journalists of the, as it was known then, Palestine Post, which later became the Jerusalem Post. He was also a peace activist. Lurie died on the eve of Passover at the age of 103. The Prime Minister of India will make a historic visit to Israel this summer. The Hindustan Times reported that Narendra Modi will visit Israel on July the 5th and the 6th, marking the first ever visit by an Indian Prime Minister to the Jewish state. The visit will reportedly focus on economic and technological cooperation. Earlier this week, Modi sent Passover greetings in Hebrew on Twitter, and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu responded, saying that the people of Israel eagerly await his historic visit. Israel's Ministry of Culture and Sport has reportedly named its first non-Israeli torchlighter for this year's Israel Independence Day ceremony. According to a report in Yediot Haronot, that person is Rabbi Marvin Heyer founder of the Simon Wiesenthal Center. We reported to you earlier this month that the ministry made the decision to include a torchlighter from outside of Israel as a symbol of Jewish unity, and that the torchlighter should, quote, personify the concern and work being done for the future of the Jewish people and reinforce the link between world Jewry and Israel. The report said that the official list will be publicized next week. The theme of this year's ceremony is Jerusalem, the eternal capital of the state of Israel and the Jewish people. The Independence Day torchlighting ceremony takes place on Mount Herzl in Jerusalem on May the 1st.
And taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Friday, April the 14th, live Shabbat services are coming up at 6 o'clock from New York City's Central Synagogue, followed by a concert of IDF musicians at 7.30. At 8 o'clock, author Dove Seidman speaks about morality at the 92nd Street Y. At 9, it's the film Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, and at 10, remarks from German-Israeli philanthropist Steph Wertheimer. At 10.30, it's Musica with Israeli singer David Broza. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 5.30, Rabbi Shlomo Riskin looks at this week's Torah portion. And that's the JBS News Update for Friday, April the 14th, 2017. I'm Tisha Bader. Shabbat Shalom.